Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is the first video of the new year. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna be doing a full paint makeover using the Lily Moon paint again, but this time we're gonna be spraying it. Can't wait to see how it comes out in my sprayer. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first, we need to go ahead and prep our piece. I did start, and I forgot to hit the record button, I did start by scuff sanding it, and now I'm using my Crud Cutter TSP Alternative No Rinse Formula. I've been using this for a few months, and I really, really like this product. Between this and scuff sanding, it will make my piece really ready for paint. All right, you guys, we are all prepped and ready to go. I used my TSP No Rinse Formula by Crud Cutter. I've been using that a lot lately, and I really like that because it alleviates that extra step of having to rinse off after you use your cleaner, and it works beautifully every time. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with the top of this table yet. I haven't really figured that out, but I probably will halfway through the project. But we are going to be using the Lily Moon paint in Sangria, which is a beautiful, bold red, which is way outside my comfort zone. You guys know I normally paint neutral colors, but I thought this little table needed something fun. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, time to get this in the sprayer and get it going. I am going to go ahead and thin this just a little bit. I would recommend thinning, but not too much. Her paint consistency is already on the thinner side, so we're just going to add a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a quick stir, and then we're ready to go. Going to assemble the gun and get this going. I get asked often if it's really hard to put it together and take it apart for cleaning purposes, and the answer is no. It Once you get it down, it goes relatively quick. All right, so one thing you might notice is I am pretty bundled up. It is cold outside. I do have my heater on, but the thing I like to tell you guys when spraying is don't go for full coverage on first coat. You always want to just do nice, light, even coats, and that's what I'm doing here. Also, when I'm working with tables of this nature, I always turn them upside down so that I can make sure I can get every little bit and there's no missing areas with paint um, when you do flip the table. So again, just kind of going over it, I'm about eight inches away from this table, and that's what I suggest is between eight and 12 inches. Depends on how thin your product is, how powerful your sprayer is, but typically that's about the distance you wanna be from your piece. So I wanna show you guys this right away. I stopped spraying so you could see the texture in which it comes out. This is the first coat, so obviously our coverage is not gonna be 100%, but don't be scared by this texture. When I first sprayed this paint, I worried for a minute and thought, wow, it brushed so much smoother than it goes on with my sprayer. But this paint self levels so nicely that when this dries down, you will not see any of this texture and it will be buttery smooth. I'm gonna come back as soon as this is dry in the exact same angle so that I can show you guys just how much this levels out and smooths out as it dries down. Here we are in the same position as earlier. I wanted to show you guys it dries down very nicely. Look at the color change alone. It dries down so much darker. Um, now we obviously need to do a second coat of coverage and possibly a third. Reds are pretty tricky when it comes to coverage. So even though they're a dark color, um, traditionally across all paint lines, reds are a little bit more for coverage that you'll need. So um, it is very, very smooth to the touch. And we're gonna go ahead and go in with our second coat now. Let me show you in a couple of other spots just so you can see how nice it has come out. You can see that there's no texture at all there and it comes out really, really nice. Now I'm gonna quickly get the edges. I'm just using a painter's edge here and you can use cardboard as well. Works perfectly every time. Okay, so we've got two coats on and I'm gonna go ahead and do another third pass once this dries. I will show you before I do that, just so you can see the coverage. Now I said this earlier, reds are notorious for not providing the most excellent coverage off the bat. One thing you can do to help is prime your piece. I did not prime this piece, but you absolutely can do that with reds. You can prime them with a dark primer and that will help with the coverage. 
Um, but normally, and I get asked this frequently, is how many coats do I spray? And that's gonna vary depending on the brand of paint that I'm using and the color of paint. In this case, Lily Moon has great coverage. I've used several colors and pretty much hands down, I've gotten away with two coats on all colors. Like I said, I'm not surprised with the red. Also, when thinning the red, as I mentioned, when I was mixing my, my paint, is I only thinned it just a tiny bit. The consistency of her paint is pretty thin already. I did not want to overwater it, and that will also affect the coverage. So I did not want to thin it out too terribly much as it really didn't need to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a third pass at this as soon as it's dry. I'll show you what it looks Losing like. Losing light, so I wanna show you guys before the end of the day here. I wanna get up really close so you can see. Pay no attention to the edge there. We're gonna be doing something different up there, but it comes out absolutely beautiful. It's equally as beautiful sprayed as it is brushed. So we're gonna continue this tomorrow. I'm gonna to do one last pass on this just to make sure I pick up any little dry spot areas. And then we're gonna use her top coat, which is brand new to me. Just so you guys can see, um, I tried to move to really good lighting so you could see, cause it's now dark out, but I used about half, there might be just a little bit more than half for that small table. So even though reds are a little bit difficult with coverage, you can see that I have half of an eight ounce to do that entire table. And I did the underneath as well. All right, time to top coat. We're gonna be using the Lily Moon top coat. It is a low luster sheen. I've never used this before, so I'm excited to give it a try. I did remember to put my filter in, which is super important for top coats, just to make sure you don't get anything in there. Um, on this, I am gonna go ahead and dilute it as well. You can dilute with water. I did check with her, so that is okay to do. Now, I do wanna mention, I am waited until the next day to go ahead and top coat. Typically in normal warm temperatures, you can top coat uh, within about two hours, but because of our weather, I went ahead and waited until the, the next day. The amount you'll need to dilute is gonna depend on several things, so I'm not gonna get into the details here. You'll just wanna trial and error it. It's gonna depend on your spray gun and the product as well. So I'm gonna start on the conservative side and then go from there. Okay, so we've got the first top coat on. I'm gonna do three. I get asked that a lot, how many, um, how many passes do I do on my top coats? I typically do three. This is a really low luster sheen, which I really like because it takes it down a notch from the satin sheen. And that's really what I was looking for. A lot of people like that matte finish, but they want that protection with the top coat on it. Lily Moon does not need to be, her paint does not need to be top coated. It can stand on its own but the top coat does add that extra durability for your project to last for a long time. So I did dilute this a little bit. I'm not gonna go into ratios of what I did because each paint sprayer is gonna be different. I suggest you use a viscosity cup. If you need to thin it, you may not. You may not need to thin it at all, but just know that it can be thin and diluted with water. Here is our first coat. It's a very low luster sheen, which I really love. Um, now, I'm not going to go into details about the top. I've done many videos doing that, but I just created a faux wood blended look with different paints. You can go check out my other videos for that. Today's focus is really spraying the Lily Moon paint and the top coat. I'm trying to get you a really good angle so you can see. It came out so nice. So her paint kind of has a matte finish to it, and this doesn't really change it that much, which I really like. So came out really nice and smooth. You can see right up in there, still some dry time needs to happen, but we are almost ready for a second coat. All right, you guys, that is it. We are at the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Wasn't that fun to see how this sprayed? My last video was about brushing Lily Moon paint, and I gotta tell you, when I brushed it, I was thoroughly blown away that the finish looks just like it looks when it's sprayed. But I do spray 90% of my pieces so that I can keep my production up. And 
I really enjoy it. So it was really fun to spray this piece and this beautiful color that I have been wanting to paint for quite a while. So thank you again for joining me. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you go hit that subscription button as well as the post notification bell and you will get all of my latest videos once they're released. Plus being a subscriber helps support my YouTube channel and keeps me going. Thank you guys again. If you have any positive comments or questions, make sure you leave them down below. I love engaging with you guys and I will always answer your questions. I'll see you on the next video.